another beautiful day and uh, everyone's just getting machines ready uh, but we were we had this tether greased up yesterday I've just greased the shaft uh, which is the PTO shaft comes in two halves and because it moves in and out a lot um, we like to keep that greased up because last year we noticed it went a little bit uh, sticky so that's greased up and I've just noticed there's a couple of tires Peter's doing some work outside the workshop so we can't get on the airline so uh, we're gonna use rescue one this airline just pump up just a couple of tires that's fine uh, this one is soft and this one is soft and Charlie's gonna pull up somewhere close Young Charlie's with us again today. She's going out on the wrapper. Lynn's gonna sit on the lap wrapper with her for a few hours, so she's confident on there. Uh, Colin's already out on the um, baler. I'm gonna get Charlie to come over this way. A little bit. Uh, we're gonna get these tires pumped up first thing. You're gonna have to uh, not judge me on the color of the the line is the only colour they are. But it goes into our new fitting up on the back here. And yeah, that should be enough to pump our tires. Let's see how it goes. We're just getting Lynn set up on the wrapper. And we just want to make sure that the hydraulics aren't too, set too fast for her. Lynn's going to show Charlie what's to do, and then Charlie will be set free to have a go on her own. There you go, there's the first two bales wrapped. I'm just gonna stick around, make sure the machine's operating as it should for a while, and uh, then we'll leave them to it. I forgot to uh, plug all the electric plugs in for the wrapper, so uh, Lynn's taking Charlie out to show her how to go, and uh, I'd forgotten to plug it all in for her. But uh, they're away and going now. I've just stayed for a little while, make sure everything's uh, working as it should it looks to be good now so they should be fine for the rest of the day uh, Keith is out mowing Peter is in the yard he's putting some new lights on some of the trailers we've been having light issues with some of the trailers so Peter is sorting that out once and for all now these are the uh, small paddocks right outside the farm and they're just a bit green and lush at the minute I can feel the moisture in there so we're gonna tear them out let the sun bake them for a day if you bale them as they are the bales become very heavy and they get very juicy and the silage goes a bit stinky. Uh, there is a degree of how much dry matter there should be in the bale of, or a percentage of how dry the bale should be. We sort of uh, just do it by eye and feel really. We're going to tread all this out and then tomorrow or the next day we will come with the baler and wrap it. First thing we need to do, take the tether out of transport mode which is that there that just locks the hydraulics so it stops these arms from unfolding in the road uh, right and we'll just very quickly take you through it this is the first uh, this is the first time using it so we're gonna have to get in and out a few times just to make sure we're all set how we want it but um, we're just gonna unfold it here love the way these things unfold. And 
this one is the, what is this one? The 8.82 meter. And on the rams, each side of the rams, you want that bar to be in the middle of the, um, the uh, jaws. And then we go into float. That means that the tether can now flex over the ridges and the furrows. We want to just move forward and let it come fast properly. Now we need to be set on 540. We want to be on eco. We just want to run the machine up. Just move it forward a bit. And it just makes sure the machine's completely unfolded. And now I'm checking down where the tines go and I'm looking to make sure that they're not digging in. And they look like they might just be a little bit low where they are. But they're not cutting in. Right, that doesn't look too bad to me. We set them up on the concrete and you set them for about two or three centimeters off the ground. Uh, that usually puts you about right. Uh, next thing to do is to put it into, um, when you go around the headlands, you want to throw all the swarf one way so it keeps it away from the side of the hedges. I always do it the wrong way to start with. Uh, is that the right way? Yes, that's the right way. So now the whole tether has moved from straight into that motion and it's going to chuck it all into the field instead of into the hedge where you don't want it. We're going to rev up to, the first time you can rev up a little bit faster, 400 revs, 400 RPM. You can go faster, you, but you want to go faster in the big thick crop. You've got to keep an eye on that side so you don't run it into the hedge. You don't want to fold up when you're in crab mode. You want to take it out of crab mode first, get it straight before you fold up. Otherwise the whole machine swings. And it caught me out last year where uh, I wasn't going to make a turn and the only thing to do was to fold up and, uh, but I didn't fold it up. I just lifted the whole machine up and the whole thing swang back into the hedge and scratched the tether. Didn't damage it, just scratched the outer guard, which was annoying but you learn these things as you go. We're set pretty nice there. Picking it all up. I love doing the first time round. That is the first three paddocks done. You can see, look at this. And there's a load more grass in these two. We had the cows out in the bottom one, so that's why there wasn't so much there, but uh, yeah, it's very lush and green and you can just feel the moisture all over it. And if you stick that in a bale now, it just becomes very juicy. It will ferment, but you'll just, it'll be juicy silage, you know. So what we do is spread it out, let the sun dry it. We only tell it once when we're doing silage and give it a day, maybe two days. And then we'll come and rake it up. This is, but this is super lush. So that's gonna take a day of drying. The rake will come, rake it up then the round baler, and then we'll wrap it up with a wrapper. If you remember a couple of videos, I said I'd come and bring you and show you the uh, field of barley. This is spring barley. I just wanted to show you the effects of the wet weather in May. Hasn't done this field any favors. Farmers ever so gutted with this because it all came up lovely and level and it looked like it was gonna do really well. And the water has just held it back. Let's just pull one of these plants out. Now it does look like it is back on the mend because I can see new shoots coming out. There's new shoots coming out here, it's starting to tiller again, but it's lost a few. Those, that one's dead and that one has died. We're into June now and it just hasn't got the time to recover back to its full state. So we are expecting a loss. Well, you know, a loss compared to what it was gonna be. Whether it will recover fully, we don't know. We don't know how big it's gonna grow. It does look like it's back on the turn. Back, it looks like it's going back to green, but it's taken ever such a long time. It's been uh, dry for a week now, and it, today, to the eye, it does just look like it's starting to go back to green. The 
other field across the way that's even worse than this one it's uh it's such a shame just one of those things you can't control the weather so uh that's the way it goes which one are you talking about the big teller yeah why is this one not big enough yeah. what this is the best one keith is his second best remember that is is the best one isn't it isn't it yeah. <laughs> what are you saying keith is bigger than mine yeah yeah we call these fields the water meadows and look at that you say to someone british countryside river ducks quiet you know but we're down here at the um we call these ones the water meadows for the simple reason grass is looking really well big thick rows i always like it when you're with the tedder and you're going through the rows for the first time it's so satisfying look at that oh yeah not bad nice lush and green so we're gonna get spread out these are the fields last year if you remember we hadn't had the tether long we wrapped up a load of wire so i'm just hoping to god we don't wrap up anymore let's crack on shall we come take my hand i will walk with you i will let go till you say so there isn't anything i wouldn't do wanna make sure that you understand we've been out tedding peter has been back at the farm fitting new lights to the trailers the farm brought some nice leds that's that one and they're uh the leds are much brighter and much uh a lot better this one was notorious for not working sometimes it would work sometimes it wouldn't so peter's gone through new wiring throughout i can see he's put some new triangles in there as well look. and this one as well now this one as you can see this is called our t8 trailer uh we've got the word for it we're just waiting for a day where we can just all pitch in strip the wood off and get some new wood on there are you doing the bed on here as well pete uh, yeah sweet so Peter's going to be uh, stripping down the old bed here because you can see it's seen better days. So uh, I'll put a time lapse up. Uh, unfortunately, I've got a bit of hay to do, so uh, we'll just have to see how that goes. But we'll put a time lapse up so you can watch Peter zipping around it. Keithy's over here. He's brought back the big tether. This is the 13 meter Crone KWT 1300. We, we love this. Don't we? We love this one. And you've broken it. No, you Twice. broke it. No, this is from mm -hmm. last, last year, this one. Really? A couple of new tines on there, Keith? Yeah. That's it. Is it just that end? Yeah, just two on this end. Is that where you put it in the hedge? No. No. It's where you dropped it in a big <laughs> hole and smashed them last year. <laughs> this has been a good machine throughout, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, they're built well. That's a long way down to over there, isn't it? It is. It's surprising how manoeuvrable it is as well really. Yeah, it's really manoeuvrable and we will have a go at some point if Keithy lets me. Only Every certain time I let you on it, you break something. Only certain people are allowed to it. touch his you're not allowed to touch his mower and you're not allowed to touch his tether. <laughs> you're not allowed to touch the combine because that's Peter's. You may look at the combine. <laughs> We're gonna leave Peter to it and then when we get back we'll have a little look round it and it should be finished, shouldn't it? No messing about, Peter. We're back on the new GoPros, the Hero 9s, and we're down on a different firmware. So we've actually downgraded, but it might be an upgrade, but it's downgrading. 
Yeah. Wrapping is uh, one of them jobs you've got to learn and it takes a, uh, it doesn't take a while to learn it just takes a while to get the knack of and once you've got the knack you're you know you're fine I don't know if I'm gonna get on this one now it might be a bit too tight but the trick is oh yeah see now I've got to go back try not to run it over I ain't gonna mess about with it just go on to the next one I thought that might be a bit tricky there. The trick is you always want to have one loaded ready to go and you want to always be wrapping. That's the fastest way. On Ridge and Fur it's a bit of a different thing altogether because one minute you're going uphill, the next you're going down. Uh, you've got to watch the bail on here. Noisy. A little bit noisy. All your controls are on here. You've got a pump. You're pumping fluid round the uh, machine constantly on here. So you just lock your spool on the go. An electric plug plugs this in, and then everything's on this control box. Try and tip them off on the hills if you're on ridge and furrow and you won't have any problems otherwise if you do it on the downwards one it won't let go of them sometimes we had two little small paddocks around the uh around the other side and we had 26 bales off there i think it was about three acres maybe not even three acres I get on that one. Yeah, I thought I'd just show you a little bit of this. Colin had just left, so I missed him on the baler, but we'll catch him at another place. I think he's now gone to the farm to wrap the pad uh, to bale the paddocks around the farm. Just gonna drop that there. And you've got to drive up to these bales. You can do it both ways. You can do it this way or you can do it from the other way. If you're coming at them from this way, you've got to be ever so close. Pick them up onto the table. You've got to always remember to put your arm down. If you don't put your arm down, the machine tries to start turning. And uh, it starts turning and scratches the arm. You can see all those scratches where we've all missed it and forgotten about it. And it's so easily forgotten about. You'll get you get into a rhythm, and then you think you get a bit complacent, and then uh, and then you press the uh, the start button before you put your arm down, which is a big mistake. I'm going to leave that bale on there. You don't have to be as close. When you're turning them like this, you can turn them round. They'll get loaded in there, square it up, pick it up. Now I can chuck my other one off. And then, yeah, just always be thinking about where you're gonna head to next. Remember your arm, press go. It wraps it all for you. I love wrapping, I love wrapping, I love tedding. I love silage making, it's the best time. It is the best time. I am loving it today. I didn't realize we'd be on here today, so that's mega. Young Ollie's had a go, she was struggling a bit because of the ridge and fur, it ain't the easiest. So uh, we need to get her on a flat field and let her have a go on a flat field where it's a bit easier. Because you sort of got to match the curve 
as you come down the furrow. That one can go off. Right, I'll shut up for a minute and do a couple. You can watch. farmer has got this running sweet. I haven't had to get off. Last year I was having to get off all, uh, all the time. I was having to get off and on. Uh, but this year, uh, this afternoon, I haven't got off it once. Only to change a wrap over. And uh, looks like they're running out. We might actually see one run out. Remember, if you're on a hill, you want to drop them this way because they'll roll down the hill. And if you've got a real steep hill, like some of you Devon boys, I've seen uh, a couple of funny videos where the new guys have obviously uh, <laughs> spat the bale out, let it run down the hill, straight through the edge. Oh, yeah, that's brilliant. But farmer has got this right. I'm on the hill there, so I need to go back up like that. Otherwise, it's going to throw forward off the table. So that's just about to run out. A little picture on here tells you which way it goes in. That is the way. In like that, put the other one in as well. Go round, are you? Go on that, that releases that thing. Now we've got to follow the picture. This is the inside one, so I'll try and do this one first. Sometimes you forget. Someone has to come in here. And then... Go through there. Come around here. What I do... Somebody might have a better way, but I just literally put a hole in the bale. Now, when it comes to unwrapping the bale, there's always a tide bit. So it's a bit annoying for that, but... Oh yeah, I'm <laughs> that wasn't a very good knot. Just tie it on there once like that. It's only got to catch this corner and then it's fine. Then this one comes off. This one goes round here, in there, and round there. You see that? Like that. That comes down here. Put it through the same bit. Oh, grass smells nice. Looking beautiful. Have a little look at the grass while we're here. Look at that. That is going to be mega silage. Lovely. Right, then pull back on here. Wrong way. Same with this one. Pull that way, release that catch. Should be job done. What most likely happen is that they usually like to snap and then you have to start again. Oh, nearly forgot our little things. 
These go on our holders. And then if we need any more, we can go and get some more. Now we just see if we've done a good job. Turn them all back on. I always turn it off just in case the knife engages. It most likely won't. We're going to go back to auto. We're going to go... I've got a feeling it's going to try and finish off the last bale, but it was very close anyway, so... Let's just see what it's going to do. It's going to do nine times round. Uh, looks like we did a pretty good job. That's how you want it, all working sweet like that. So it looks like Peter and the farmer have had a good day. Not a bad job, is it? Nice and smart. And now we don't snag any of the bales because there was nails sticking up where the old uh, it was just the, the old bed was just knackered. Looks really smart. That'll last a few years. No more snag bales. Good job that. I think it's had new lights on the back. I think I showed you that last time. And new lights on the back as well. So yeah, smart job that.